everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be trying to determine what's the best performance car you can buy new for less than $30,000. And so the four vehicles we're going to be comparing are the Volkswagen GTI, the Ford Mustang EcoBoost, the Subaru WRX, and the Scion FRS or Subaru BRZ. Now, yes, there are other performance vehicles out there that can be had for less than $30,000, but these are the four which I have driven, so these are the four which I'm going to be comparing. So let's start off comparing these based on their weight, and it's a drastically different story for every vehicle in here. And for this video, we're only going to be comparing the metrics of the manual transmission options for each of these vehicles, as these are the most performance-oriented of the different models. So with the FRS, the vehicle weighs 2,760 pounds. And this is extraordinarily light for a sports car in today's age. And so that's fantastic. So that's why it gets the first place in this. Second is going to go to the Volkswagen GTI, which adds 215 pounds on top of the FRS. Now, if you add another 295 pounds to the GTI, you're going to get into the territory of the WRX. And if you add another 265 pounds on top of the WRX, you're going to get into the territory of the Mustang. So the Mustang is about 775 pounds heavier than the Scion FRS in manual transmission form, which is an enormous difference and it's going to make a huge impact on how they behave and how they handle. So moving on, let's talk about the engines. And this is where the Mustang is going to shine. It's got an inline four cylinder, 2.3 liters with a twin scroll turbocharger, and it's producing 310 horsepower and 320 pound feet. None of the competition here comes close. Now the Subaru WRX is next in line with its two liter boxer four cylinder, 268 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. And it does a good job of getting into that boost early on with the twin scroll turbocharger, much like the Ford EcoBoost. And third place, we've got the GTI with 210 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, and it makes that torque very early on, just 1,500 RPM. So a great engine for getting into peak torque early on. And then finally ending with the Scion FRS, not too much potency out of the 2.0-liter Boxer 4, 200 horsepower, and about 150 pound-feet of torque. So getting into the third of nine topics, let's talk about the steering. So the FRS, or the BRZ, this is where it really shines. It's got a sharp ratio steering. Uh, it's very responsive because the vehicle is so lightweight and it's extremely precise, has a good weight to it as well. So it really knocks out all the categories, does a phenomenal job. The steering hands down, best steering goes to the FRS or the BRZ. Next up, I'm going to give it to the WRX. I think it's also, it does a nice job. It's very, uh, it's a nice ratio it's got to it. Not too long, not too short. Uh, it also has a good weight to it and it seems to be pretty precise and also very responsive. And then I'm going to end with the Mustang and the GTI as far as steering. And I'm going to give those kind of a tie for last place there. For the Mustang, it actually feels decently precise and it has a good weight to it, but it isn't all that responsive. So you turn the wheel and there's kind of a delay between when you turn the wheel and when the vehicle starts to turn. For the GTI, it's a bit of a different story. It's actually pretty responsive, but the overall feel to the steering is pretty numb, uh, and basically there's not much effort required to it. And so it's kind of an experience that kind of removes the involvement, and for that, I'm gonna put it at the bottom with the Mustang. Now, moving into the fourth category, fun to drive, and perhaps this is one of the most important categories for this comparison. And I'm going to give it to the manual FRS. And before you, you know, think that that's a little bit crazy, hear me out because I've got a pretty big disclaimer with that. First of all, it has to be the manual because if you get the automatic FRS, the gearing is changed to be less aggressive and it adds a little bit of weight and it pretty much ruins the experience. So the manual FRS is phenomenally fun to drive. The automatic isn't quite there and the gearing is much less aggressive and so it loses the torque and the engine already is kind of suffering in torque and so it just kind of removes from the experience. Also, with the FRS, it's only the most fun to drive if you have the right roads to drive it on. So you want low speed, tight corners, or you know, even medium speed uh, tight corners, and you're gonna really enjoy driving the FRS. But if you're in a city, uh, you know, you don't really have that much torque in the FRS. So if you're driving around in a city constantly and you've got the FRS, you're not really able to take advantage of what it's so good at. And so it's not gonna be the most fun to drive in a city. 
Now, which do I think is the best compromise of back roads and city driving? Well, that I think is the WRX. It gets into peak torque very quickly, so it's got great acceleration regardless of where you are, and it's also very fun. It's got great steering when you get into the backcountry roads. Now, third place I'm going to give to the Mustang. It's got a lot of power, and if you get the manual transmission, you've got more aggressive gearing, and you've got plenty of torque to put down, and it's pretty early on because you've got that twin scroll turbocharger. So peak torque, 320 pound-feet, a ton of torque at, you know, 3,000 RPM. The disadvantage here is just that it has so much weight that it kind of pulls away from the experience of driving it. And then finally, fourth, the least fun to drive, I'm giving to the GTI. Now, all of these cars are great cars. Like, don't get me wrong. They're all very fun, very good cars to drive. The reason I say the GTI is the least fun to drive, it's front-wheel drive. It has really tall gear ratio, so you don't do all that much shifting, and you stay in gears for an extended period of time. And it also doesn't allow you to put down that much torque with these tall gear ratios. And it's not that involved. So the brake pedal feel, the throttle feel, and the steering feel is all a bit less involved than all of the other vehicles we're talking about here. So those are my reasons for putting the GTI last. Once again, I think they're all phenomenal vehicles, uh, but that's the order I would put them in as far as fun to drive. It'd be FRS, WRX, Mustang, and then GTI. Now let's start talking about some more practical things, because if you're spending less than $30,000 on a car, you probably do want some practical amenities with it. So the next one I want to talk about is visibility. And the best ones here are going to be the GTI and the WRX. I'm going to give those a tie for first. Both of them have phenomenal visibility, looking out the fronts, to the sides, and out the rear, checking your blind spot. Great visibility in both of those cars. In last place, I'm going to give a tie between the Mustang and the FRS. And both of these, you know, have decently narrow windows up front. Visibility looking out the rear isn't that great, and that's where, you know, they're really losing points in this category. In the Mustang convertible, it does have better visibility checking to your left. But in the fastback, you're going to have that B pillar and C pillar back there, which are going to be blocking your view, much like in the FRS. So overall, those two cars are going to be a little bit worse than the WRX or the GTI. Now let's talk about another category dealing with kind of practicality and functionality. Let's talk about the interiors. And so here, what I think really shines is the GTI. For the money, hands down the best interior of these four cars. And the other thing is, it's the quietest interior of the four cars. So you have to give it the benefit of that as well. I think the Mustang also has a pretty nice interior, so I'm gonna give it second place. Now I'm in the EcoBoost Premium right now, so that's gonna put you just under $30,000, but I do like the interior in here. You've got nice knobs, good switches, the steering wheel has a good feel to it, good cushion to it, very comfortable seats, um, you know, good functionality, plenty of gauges uh, in the display, so that's gonna get the second place. Third's gonna go to the Subaru WRX, a little bit cheaper feel than the two other cars, which are getting first and second. Overall, everything's pretty good. It's very functional, everything is useful, everything's intuitive, and that I do like about it. And it does have comfortable seats as well. The only one of these four cars that honestly feels a little bit cheap to me as far as the interior is the FRS, and it's just a little bit plasticky. Some of the things aren't quite as functional. Um, you know, for the most part, it is very intuitive, but it's a little bit more plasticky, a little bit cheaper. They've pulled out weight from it, so it's noisier than the other vehicles, and you know, it's more performance oriented than it is interior oriented. So fourth there will go to the FRS. Now let's talk about overall practicality. And once again, the GTI is going to win this category. It's got tons of cargo space, it has enough space to fit rear passengers, and it has plenty of space for the front driver. Comparatively, the WRX I would give second place, not quite as much trunk space, but you also can fit two adults in the back if you need to. Now third place here I'm going to give to the Mustang. Now you're not going to fit adults in the rear seats. Um, you know, you could use them I suppose, but they're not really all that useful. The trunk, however, is a great size, even larger than the WRX. So third place will go to the Mustang. And then finally ending with the FRS here as far as practicality. You can't really use the rear seats unless they're kids or adults without legs. Uh, maybe even not even have a head because, you know, it's a little bit cramped back there. And then finally, it doesn't have much cargo space. I think it's only about seven cubic feet in the rear trunk, so not really all that much cargo space in the FRS. Okay, moving on to the eighth topic, 
fuel economy. So, you know, the benefits of fuel economy, you've got lower emissions, you've got more range, and you know, you don't have to pay quite as much at the pump. So first here goes to the GTI. It has the highest rating, it's lightweight, it's aerodynamic, and in my own testing, it was able to achieve over 40 miles per gallon. So absolutely incredible fuel economy out of the GTI. Second place is going to go to the Scion FRS, which even though it isn't rated that high, 22 in the city, 30 on the highway, the Mustang EcoBoost is actually rated higher, uh, but this FRS is so lightweight, it has a very uh, small frontal surface area, it's got a low coefficient of drag, and so in real world it's going to do phenomenal gas mileage. And my own testing with the manual version of the BRZ, I was able to achieve 38 miles per gallon, and so very good fuel economy out of the FRS. Now, third place here is going to go to the Mustang. This is a phenomenally efficient 2.3 liter engine in it. It's capable of great gas mileage, uh, significantly better than the WRX as far as the EPA rating, even though in my own testing, this Mustang did a little bit worse. It got about 33.5 miles per gallon on my fuel economy test course, which is pretty much just highway driving, a little bit of city, a little bit of hills mixed in. And my WRX got 35.1, but the WRX is rated significantly less. It is all wheel drive. And so it does make sense that, you know, you're going to sacrifice some fuel economy there, especially in city driving. And so overall, the WRX is going to get last place there. Now, the Mustang is pretty heavy, and it does have the largest engine of the group. So even though I'm giving it third place here, I think there are certainly scenarios in which you're going to get worse fuel economy in the Mustang than the other vehicles, simply because of its weight and because of its aerodynamics. It's a very large vehicle and because of the size of the engine. So overall, third place, it's able to do quite well on the highway, but I think in certain scenarios, because of all the other factors, you will see slightly worse fuel economy. So let's get into the final topic of the group, and this is going to be MSRP. And I'm going to give the winner based on the starting price of the manual version of the base version of each of these vehicles. So the cheapest goes to the Volkswagen GTI, keeping it under $25,000, very impressive. Slightly over $25,000 is the Mustang EcoBoost Fastback. Then you're gonna to get to the Scion FRS, and then finally ending with the most expensive of the group for the base price, the Subaru WRX. So if you look at all of these nine categories and add up the first place winners for each of these categories, first place will go to the Volkswagen GTI, five of the categories it did best in. But here's the thing, those five categories don't necessarily relate to how fun it is to drive and how the driving experience is. So even though it's the most mature, it's the most practical, it makes the most sense for an everyday driver of the group, it isn't necessarily the most fun to drive. Second would go to the Scion FRS, which once again, not practical at all, but it excels in the performance in the fun categories. And then third and fourth, with just one first place finish for both the WRX and the Mustang. Now these are kind of the powerhouses of the group though. And in you know city scenarios, they're gonna be quite fun to drive. You've got plenty of acceleration. Um, you've got low end torque with the twin scroll turbochargers. They're fun vehicles, even though, you know, based on these rankings, they don't necessarily show that because they're towards the bottom end. So which vehicle should you pick? Well, if you're mature, if you're the perfect student, if you get straight A's in school uh, and you don't do naughty things on the weekend, get the GTI. If you're self-confident with yourself, you know, you don't care what others think of you, you can get the Scion FRS and you don't have to worry about people saying, hey, you know, it's so underpowered, blah, blah, blah. The thing is engineered phenomenally. It's technically brilliant. And off in these, you know, mountain roads where you've got twisty corners, you're gonna be so phenomenally happy with choosing that vehicle. Now, if you're kind of a ski bum that's hitting up the mountain, you're a bit of an adrenaline junkie, you need that all wheel drive, then, you know, the WRX makes sense. It's a very fun car to drive. It's not that heavy. It has great low end torque and it's seriously quick. It's just as quick as the STI in my own testing. It's a phenomenal vehicle. And then finally, if you want all the power there is, you know, you want something that it's gonna go straight really quick. It's gonna be fun in a city environment. And it's also not too bad in corners. It's actually pretty fun to drive. It can handle its weight fairly well, even though it is fairly heavy. The Mustang also does make a good amount of sense. Even though it's a heavy vehicle, it's got tons of torque, tons of low end torque. And if you get the manual transmission, you've got aggressive gearing and you can have a seriously fun time in that car in some twisty roads. So all of them great options. I think there's a reason behind purchasing any one of them. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. 
I need to find a shady spot to pull over because I don't know what to talk about next.